Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Books of Time by Board and Dice. This is a one to four player game, takes roughly about 45 to 60 minutes to play, and is for ages 13 and up. And in the game, Books of Time, you are basically playing as a historian, creating and writing and drafting the Books of Time, the Books of Human History, per se. And there are three different books in this game. You'll have a red, a green, and a yellow book, which dictate the history of time. Everybody else is going to be doing the same thing and whoever has managed to create the best rendition is going to be the winner. And how do you do that? Well, on your turn you'll take two actions. One action is going to be based on the pages that you are going to create and gather and place into your books, and the other action is a chronicle action, a specific unique book designed each time in the game to give you specific actions every round. And you're going to go through the game as each of the pages of the chronicle turn up to the point where there's no more pages left. At the end of that point, whoever has the most victory points on this track here is going to be the winner. I'll discuss how to play the game, I'll discuss my um, the setup for the game, and of course my review. And if you'd like, if you appreciate these type of videos, please consider giving us a like, a comment, and a subscribe. Well, you ready? Let's get into it. To set up the game Books of Time, the first thing you do is determine the number of players playing the game. From there, you're going to give them everything they need to play the game. A, you're going to give them three books. Each of these three books should be prearranged in the rules that tells you what pages are going to go in these books. But as an indicator, on the bottom right of these pages is a number one, and they will be stacked in a specific order in your book. And you'll get, I believe, two pages for each of your books that'll have a front and a back cover. Once you've done that for all three of your books, you're then going to take your player separator. It's a little organizer that involves this kind of a um, horizontal board that you attach to each other and that will create the location for where you'll place your pages. Uh, from there you're going to give each player objective markers. There are three for each category of green, of yellow, and red. These are additional points you can store, score at the end of the game with a little bit of push or luck. Just simply place the larger one on bottom, the middle one in the middle, and the smaller one on top to kind of give you an idea of a sense of the requirements for each of these guys and just place them somewhere within reach next to your player board. Each player is going to be a specific color. Give them a bookmark to indicate what color they are, as well as a useful notifier of like where you are in some of your books when you have to take some of your actions. I'll be green this time. I'm also going to get two uh, unique resources, and everybody's going to get two pages or two, two papers and two pens. These are resources you'll use throughout the game that allow you to get your pages and place them into your book. Then, the next thing you'll do is, for the final thing for you, at least for your player area, is you'll take six random pages and you will draw them from the top of the page deck. Uh, from there, you're going to assign one into one of your books and you'll just place it on the right hand side. You'll open up your book, you'll place it on the right hand side of the book, you'll close it. Then you'll take two more of these and place them in the slots above your uh, horizontal area to, uh, you know, separator. You'll place one in the far left slot, and then you'll take the next one and place it in the next leftmost slot. The extra three pages you have are going to go to the discard pile, which may be used later. Each player is going to get all these things, and then there's an additional portion of setup. The, the, the pages that I mentioned, these guys are going to be shuffled and you're going to deal out four in a, um, in a horizontal row, in which case everybody can see them and they're within reach of all players. You're going to take the main game board of the game and depending on the number of players playing, you're going to assign them their colored markers. There should be four of them. One will be for your victory points and then one will be for each of the three categories and you'll place them in the colored locations on the bottom middle of the game board in each of the bottom areas of the rows. These will be moving up on these tracks here as you accumulate value from them. Next thing is the Chronicle. This is the length of the game. You'll be taking the Chronicle pages and shuffling them up and then removing eight of them. Uh, these will not be used throughout the game, but the rest will be. And as an added bonus, you can take the bookmark that has a little three with a time marker on it and place it the third page from the back. And remember to include the last page of the book as part of the pages included here. Open it up to the first page and place it on this little stand here, which is also something that you will build before you start the game. The last thing you're going to be doing is taking all the tokens and placing them within reach of all players. You'll have your uh, papers here. These are your resource markers. You'll have your pens, and then you're going to have your files. 
files are either a wild for either pen or paper, or they are considered files and used for very specific bonuses throughout the game. The other two markers are basically points that you can take as you go past the 50 marker threshold, the 50 victory point threshold here, you'll take a 50, and if you go past it again, you'll take an 100. So just go ahead and stack those somewhere within reach because you're going to be gathering them as you go throughout the game. And then there's all these red markers. These red markers are going to be distributed to you as you pass certain areas on the game board. That's it. That's the full setup of the game Books of Time. Let's talk about how to play now. Okay, a caveat. Basically, these victory point markers, instead of placing them on zero for the track, you'll place them on the number 10. This is going to be because you're going to be utilizing these throughout the game, if you would like, to gain bonuses from some of the actions played. Choose a player to begin, I'll be that player. And then the game produces itself in rounds. The rounds are based on the number of players playing the game. So if I am playing with three players here, one, two, and three, then every three rounds, you're going to do an end phase action. And it's going to continue this until this book runs out. So what can you do on your turn? On your turn, which is one turn around, you are going to be able to take two actions. Action number one is you can select any one of the actions available to you on your player reference sheet here. The actions available are activate pages, write pages, close a book, draw, advance, and turn pages. There's a few of these that you're gonna be using for the majority of the game, and sometimes you'll use a few of the other ones as well. The last action you can take is choosing a chronicle event and performing that action if you can slash if you want to. Chronicle actions are found on this book here. Let's go into the different actions for the game. Action one is activate pages. You're going to be basically choosing a book and activating both the left and right hand side page of that specific book for this action. If I wanted to choose the red book on the first main page, I'm going to get the large square uh, value, whatever that specific value is. In this case, it would be two papers. So I can gain two paper resources if I were to activate the two pages on this book. Then I would go to the right hand side. I would ignore the bottom portion and just perform the large square. This one here says I can spend a pen and a page in order to, or paper, in order to get this specific yellow marker up one space on the main game board. So if I spent one of these uh, papers and one of these pens, I am green, I would move my yellow marker up one on the track here. When you move up on the track, you'll have two options. Option one is you can take the benefit of the location that you move to. In this case, it would be one file. So I could take this one file into my resource pool. Option two is instead of taking the bonus, I can instead choose to upgrade my, one of my objectives of that color. So I moved up on yellow. Let's say I don't want the bonus file. I can remove this marker here and progress to the next one. This is the push your luck aspect of the game and I will get into that after I go through all of the actions. But just know that to activate your pages, you will take the action on both sides of your pages and then you're going to be done with that action. The next action is write pages. You'll pay the cost to write a page in the corresponding book, gain the immediate benefit. You can do this multiple times. Writing pages is pretty simple. Any of the pages that you have above your horizontal rows here, and there is a total of five of them, you can never have more than five, and you're always going to input them into the far left-hand slots, um, is gonna have a cost underneath it. The first two that you start with are gonna have a cost of three pens. So if I wanted to, I could spend three pens, take my page here, and place it on the right-hand side, always the right-hand side, of my book of the color. You can never take a page that's a different color and place it in a book that is a different color. So I could pay three pens and open this book up and I would place it directly on the right hand side face up. I could then, if I want, take multiples of this specific action as much as I can, as much as I can afford or for as many of the um, pages that I have. So I can take this green one for three pens and place it here. Another thing to note too is as you purchase more or as you gather more pages, you're gonna be placing them down and it's going to give you um, more valuable, it'll be cheaper resources. So if I got another page, which I'll explain, these would move down and the previous ones I played will actually cost me less. Regardless though, writing a page is spending the cost of the page that's written underneath and placing it into your books and doing it as many times as you want, as much as you can. The next one is to close a book. When you close a book, you're gonna close one book and you'll immediately gain the benefits depicted on the bottom left of your current page 
then open it at its first page. So basically, you're gonna take a book, and depending on how far you are into your book, when you close it, either because you have to close it, because you've moved all the actions, or because you're choosing to do the close a book action, you will check every page on the bottom of these little markers here, those little small uh, rectangle spaces, and gain the small benefit before you open the book back up to the front, uh, once again, starting at the, like, like, kind of just after the cover here. It's a way of kind of refreshing your book, getting unique benefits, and getting more resources as well. The next thing you can do is draw. You can take exactly two pages from the offering. The offering are these five cards here, the one on top of the deck and the four available to you. You'll take any of these guys that you want and you will place them down into your area here. What happens is when you get a new page, you will push the previous pages and place your new one on the far left hand side. Meaning every single time you get a new page, that one is gonna be costing the most. And the ones that you previously did not use, or maybe you're saving to use them, are going to cost less. From three pens, to three pens, to a pen and a uh, paper, pen and a paper, and then two papers. Then whenever you gain a page from the offering, you'll simply put a new one down from the top of the deck here, making a new card available on the top of the deck. And you can always, of course, choose the top of the deck for my second paper here, or page, and place it right here. So then I've got my four pages, and as you can see from left to right, they get cheaper. But yeah, simple. Take two, place them down, always from left, pushing to the right. The next thing you can choose to do is advance. You can pay the cost to advance one of the civilization boards and gain the benefit. And you can do this as many times as you want. This is a civilization board. It's the large board in the center of the table. And there are three ways you can advance, yellow, green, and red. The cost is associated the, uh, on the far right hand side of each of the rows here. So if I want to increase my green from the first area to the second, it would cost me two pens and a paper. Then once again, I can either gain the benefit or I can upgrade one of my tiles. And you can do that for as many times as you possibly can for as much resources that you want, want to spend. It's really up to you, just like it is to take pages from here and place them into your books. And finally, you can turn pages. You can choose up to three of your books and you can turn each of those books one page uh, to the left, just like you would when you're reading a book. You're also going to gain the immediate benefits when you do. You look at the bottom portions of these pages here, you'll take one for each of the pages that you turn, and those will give you either pen, or they will give you um, paper, or maybe a file, or something like that as well. And those are all the main basic actions that you can take. You'll choose one of these main actions, and then you will take and do a chronicle action. The chronicle book action has two sides. There's the bottom left and the bottom right side. Ignore the very bottom right hand portion of the page. This is only for solo mode. This one here is going to actually let me take one of these from the offering and put it here. Whereas the one on the far right will let me spend a folder to gain four victory points. Once each player is taking their main action and one of the two chronicle actions, going all the way around until all players have done so, that last player, in this case the third player, will take this and move it one to the left, just like reading a book. So you're going to be reading a chronicle as well. This will change the chronicle actions from round to round, giving you unique benefits or ways in which you can utilize actions as the game progresses. Let's talk about a few aspects to the game. Number one, let's talk about these objective ones. These are the objectives. They are red, yellow, and green. And you're gonna be trying to complete whatever the topmost portion of these objectives. The red one says that you're gonna need two of a specific type of, the, in, in, in the red book, right? Red will be for red book, green will be for green, yellow will be for yellow. But in the red book, it's gonna ask you, in my case, you need two planets, plus two of any of these other two symbols. And on your pages that you purchase on the top right hand side is going to have a symbol. These symbols are, are going to matter for the objectives. So in my case here, I want this red book to be filled up with at least two planet type red cards and then any two of the other three options, but it has to be two of them. So two needles, two books, or two uh, germs. And instead of moving up on this track here in the middle of the game board, like I've been talking about, when you move up, you can gain the benefit or you can remove one of these. If you remove them, they're going to have a higher requirement, but the bottom portion of these guys is gonna have a higher victory point value. At the end of the game, if you have upgraded these to the very top here, you are going to be going for that. And if you do not succeed in getting it, even if you're just one card off, you get nothing. So it's a push your luck in a way. If you wanna kind of pull these 
when you've already gotten them, it'll be a little easier. But if you want to try and kind of plan ahead and pull them up into the point where you get to here, even if um, you pulled it to here and you're only one off, you're still going to get nothing. So you got to be careful with how you choose to remove your objective markers here. And you'll do that for each of the books. The yellow one is going to be a number of pages in a specific order. You have to have a book with a, a page with a sailboat that is yellow. Then you have to have a page with a wheelbarrow that is yellow. And then the final page you need in combination is a donkey. And as you remove them, they will increase the number of cards that need to be added in unison. And the final one is green. Green is pretty simple. It's three different types of pages, then four, and then four plus a specific page, which means that there's gonna be one pair for each of the books that are green at the end of the game if you push your objectives that far. You don't have to do them at all. You could leave them all as they are and just get each of the top ones and focus more on somewhere else, but it's kind of your option. Talking about these guys here, like I said, there's a variety of ways in the game in which you're gonna be able to push each of your markers from these three different categories up. And when you do, you gain the benefit or you can remove one of these markers here. And when you do, you will gain a bonus. The back of these guys here is gonna have a bonus where you can choose to gain a resource of some type or a refresh, et cetera, et cetera. But if you gain these markers here, uh, you're gonna, some of them are going to let you move other markers up farther. So the first one here on the uh, yellow track is gonna give me a folder, which is also a while. The next one is actually gonna let me push another one of my markers up. Uh, some of them are gonna give me victory points for the different types of pages in the specific book that you are pushing up along this track here. And then the last thing is going to give me victory points for each page in that book. And all of them actually have it. So if you push your markers all the way to the very top here, that is going to give you two points for each page, including the pages you've already placed at the beginning of the game for the books that you currently have. So there's a large variety of ways to gain victory points in here. There are other different actions that will involve giving you symbols for specific books. And if you push farther on these tracks than they're actually able to go, you'll just gain a specific benefit of either one victory point, a pen, or a page, or a paper, I should say. Pages and papers in this game. <laughs> um, but that's pretty much the idea of the game. You will go through the round, taking your two different actions, the chronicle action and your main action of your choice on your little reference card here, up until the last player takes their turn, and then they flip the chronicle, in which case you progress throughout the game. At a certain point, there is going to be a little bookmark on the chronicle that states there are three uh, rounds left, meaning that you'll be going to be taking your three action, your two, four, six different actions, and that will end the game. And once you get to that last page, you're guaranteed to know that that's your last turn of the game. When the chronicle closes, so does the game, and you'll start to score. You are going to score victory points based on a number of things. One thing is going to be the end of game points you will get from pushing up to the top of the main board. The other will be you'll be checking each of your objective markers and depending on how far you push them, did you accomplish the goal? And if you did, you will score additional points with these. Um, and you'll also be scoring victory points for the points that you accrued throughout the game, whether it be from taking an action that lets you spend pens to gain victory points or moving your marker up on the track that gives you four points for each type of different type of symbol in your book. Um, but those are the main three ways you'll be scoring points throughout the game. And don't forget, if you ever go past 50, you'll take this marker here and you'll take the 50 marker and then you'll continue progressing yourself along the game board. All right, that's pretty much the idea of the Books of Time. I know it's kind of a long explanation, but the main thing you need to take away from this game is that there are two actions you take. You'll go through the round, flip this book here, and then you'll progress until this book is emptied, in which case you'll score your objectives. You will score the top of the main board here and whatever you previously gained. And that's it. Let's talk about what I think about it. Okay, a uh, small caveat. There's another way to score. However, you might not even get a single point this way, which is why I kind of forgot. But if you have uh, sets of five resources at the end of the game, you will score one point for the five that you have. So if I had, oh, I don't know, I had five of these papers, that would give me one point or five pens or any combination thereof with, of course, folders in being included there as well. So yes, you can get a, bit, a few extra bonus points, but I suggest you spend your resources. They're more valuable that way. But otherwise, yeah, that's all the scoring. So what do I think about Books of Time by Board and Dice? Well, Board and Dice usually has some pretty complex, pretty lengthy games that are fairly complicated style Euro games. This one is, I would say, on the lower complicated side. I mean, there's quite a lot of actions that you can take. There's unique different actions each game that you play based on the different types of the way the book is set up and how many pages are removed. Each pre page presents its own unique actions that you can take, but it's very, very simplified. 
You're just going to take one action of your choosing from your actions, which is on your player reference, and then you will take one of the two actions on the Chronicle, and you're done. And that is so nice to explain. Being able to teach somebody a board and dice game in under like 10 minutes is, uh, is really, really nice and still have that complexity and that depth. This is definitely a medium to heavy type of a game, uh, but the explanation and like how the game is played out is very simple. Each of the actions has their benefits and I think you should know that you'll most likely be activating pages the most, writing pages, and then drawing pages. Closing your book is a thing that you're gonna do when you basically run out of pages in which you have to close the book and gain the, the benefits underneath and then you'll start once again. Or if you kind of wanna just reset your book, it's a thing you might wanna do. Maybe there's some strategy that I just didn't notice from it, but it wasn't done very often in my play, my play groups. Um, and then of course advancing. This is going to allow you to advance your marker up here, which at the end of the game it might be necessary, or if you want to advance more than once, you can spend those resources to do so. Um, but it's just simply a cost. Anything that has a cost in this game that's an action, like taking these pages and putting them into your books or moving up on this track here, is going to be something you can do multiple times, whereas everything else only happens once. Turning pages. Turning pages is useful, especially for your objectives. Maybe you have your boat, buggy, and camel, and you need to do your boat again, but you've already passed that page and now you just got the boat. You can use the turn pages function to kind of organize your books, or maybe you don't like the actions you have on your books and you need something else for next round. That's another bonus thing you can take as well. The chronicle actions. They're gonna be useful actions that you can take dependent on the round. Sometimes neither of the actions will be beneficial to you. Sometimes they both will. Sometimes there's a specific one action that you need to take that's gonna help you and your game. Each player is playing their own game. There's not a whole lot of interaction from other players. The main interaction is gonna be from the offering, the available five uh, pages that you can take and place them into your categorically, like category areas here that let you pull them and place them into your books. So the main thing you're gonna hear from other players is, Damn it, you took the page that I wanted. And, you know, it's a kind of a light type of a game when it comes to interaction and meanness. It's really more of a type of a solitaire game with the added benefit of taking cards, similar to like Mystic Veil's interaction. None of these pages really affect your opponents or hurt your page opponents in any ways, but there are a number of different actions, and I'll talk about a few of them. Uh, in this case, some of them are going to have like uh, these uh, pages here and they're going to have a color. This is referencing pages in the top portion of your row here. So it says if you have two green pages, which I do, I'm going to be able to gain two pens and a victory point. And the bottom portion is always going to be referencing the bonus action. When you place these pages down into your books, you will score this bonus action. And whenever you do one of the actions here that allows you to get the bonuses, this is how you check for bonuses. When you take them and place them in, or whenever it does something like turn the page or close the book. And it's really nice. In fact, I don't think I talked about the bonus action when you place the pages in. You get a bonus point or type of thing at the bottom here when you take pages and place them into your thing here. I wish help you pay for them too, which is nice. Things like files. Files are a wild resource that count as either the pen or paper, but they're also files. And files in the game are very beneficial. They're gonna provide you with unique bonuses, but it might be something that happens later or in the Chronicle or in a book that you have. Like turning into a file for five victory points and one of these uh, papers, super nice. Or how about a file for two pens and two papers? Uh, two papers for uh, the push-up on the green track, and two more victory points. And I think you get the gist of how all these actions take place and work. You are building books. You are turning pages, you are activating pages, you are flipping over the pages, and you are rotating the books back to start, focusing on not only how you coordinate your books based on the objectives you need to complete, the green, yellow, and red, but also the type of actions you want to take next. You flip over the page, you don't like that action, and then you, you're like, oh, I don't like any of these actions. Maybe it's time to turn pages, gain some bonuses, and hope for the best on the next page. Uh, how you organize your book is also going to benefit you by not only the bonuses that you gain, but also this main game board here. There's a number of where areas where you can score points. Two, four, six different ways you can score based on how you build each of your books. Then there are three ways in which you will score uh, victory points, either five points, or be able to move up on a track, um, and being able to score two points for each of the pages in each of the books that you have. Pushing up on these tracks is very important and will score you a ton of points at the end of the game. Do not neglect the board here. Do not neglect your objectives. Sometimes it's worth pushing your luck, and sometimes it's a big bummer when you push it, you think you'll get that one last page, and then you never see it because somebody already grabbed it. 
I love board and dice games. I love the tightness of them. I like the complexity of them. And I really like that my favorite type of stuff there with games are games that are easily explained with a lot of options. And this one does that. It's very tight. It's very complex, but it's very simple to understand what you need, what, what you can do, but not what you need to do. Overall, the quality of this game is excellent. I love the little stand for the Chronicle. This feels like the main book of time, the Chronicle, the Passage of Time, and then how we're trying to record history in each of these three different ways. Uh, the functionality of these game boards here, where we're pushing up on these tracks to focus on which of the different portions of books we want to focus on, and watching other players. What are they taking? How, what are you likely to not get because they've taken those portions of the book that you need? And what books should you focus on based on those players and their choices in the game? So like, there's not a lot of player interaction, you do need to focus on what they've gathered because if you miss out on certain pages, uh, you're not going to be able to complete your books. And so you kind of have to pick and choose your battles in this game. And luckily there's a lot of battles and a lot of options that you can take a glance at. Artwork. The artwork in the game is excellent. It's phenomenal. I love the style of the pages. I love how simple it is to understand them. There is a symbol as to what the page is, the color that dictates the book that it goes into, uh, art demonstrating some portion of history, whether it be the first television, a specific route in order to gain the first portions of gold, China cabinets, uh, uh, invasions, and all that kind of good stuff. And then what the main story is and the bonus for when you do not utilize the main story or activate the main page. So art, quality of the game, all this is excellent. I have one minor gripe about this game and I can solve it with one word, okay? My gripe is that these little markers here are papers and these are pages. And that confused me not only throughout this entire video but for every game that I play, Books of Time. So what I've been fighting out to say is I call these pillows. So it's pillows and pens, and these are pages or papers. That's, that's how I was able to do it in my head. Maybe it's a me thing and not a you thing, but I just like calling these pillows. They were cute. And by the time I started calling them that, everybody else around the table did as well. It made it less confusing as the different types of things you have to call specific things. So yeah, but yeah, overall, this is an excellent game. This is a lot of fun. This is probably one of my favorite games from Board and Dice that I have played in quite some time, and I do love their games, mind you. So this is definitely up there with that. It probably takes a little longer than it states. It is definitely more on the complex side, even though it seems very light. And uh, where the game does have artwork and the stylization of it, and it all works very well in theme. If you're looking for a deep, vivid artwork style game, uh, as, as you can see here, it's not one of those. This is focusing mainly on the writing of the books, utilizing the art to illustrate what, what era it is and what you're gonna get. In fact, you might even pay attention to the art as you're going throughout the game because you're too focused on making the best choices you possibly can. I love this game. It's great. If you're interested and you think so as well, take a look down below in the description. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Books of Time by Board and Dice. If you're interested, there's a link below, like I said. And if, of course, if you just like the video, if you're interested in subscribing, it does greatly help us out. If you watched more than one of our videos in the past, consider hitting the subscribe. Even if you don't hit the notification, that's fine. It gives us kind of more numbers and shows people that, you know, people are interested in seeing what we have to show you guys. I love these type of games. I want to know what you guys think about the Books of Time game or a game. Is this something you'd actually want to pick up? Uh, for me, this was a solid, solid game, and I was very excited when I got to try it out. It's mine. I'm keeping it. You can also watch us on live streams at 6.30 p.m. PST, where we show you games similar to this one, but this one's probably a little bit too complex for a live stream. There's too much going on and everybody working on their own battles, but we have a lot of games like this that are on the stream. You can watch on Whatnot. We have a stream on Wednesday. These were all at 6.30 p.m. PST, so you can see us play these games. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time, and as always, I look forward to chronicling the passages of time with you, but doing a better job at chronicling next time.